Whether you're looking to improve your listening experience on the go or you're a musician looking for their first pair of in-ears to play on stage, this video will be everything you need to know to get started with IEMs in less than 10 minutes. Okay, so the very first thing we need to clarify is that in-ear monitors or IEMs are different from earbuds. Both IEMs and earbuds are considered earphones, but IEMs have a little silicone tip that go inside your ear to form a seal within your ear canal. This seal is very important because it provides both isolation and creates the necessary acoustic environment within your ear so that you can get a deep bass response. Earbuds like this one have a flat head that sit on the entrance of your ear canal and doesn't really ever form a seal. This is just a little bit of nomenclature, but it's an important one to discuss because it's a point where I still see quite a bit of confusion. So in my opinion, the first IEM you should start with is the $30 Kiwi Ears Cadenza. Look, I know that if you Google what is the best budget IEM to buy is, you're going to get countless results. The truth is, most recommendations these days are gonna sound quite good and are gonna be in the same ballpark of one another in terms of sound quality. So my biggest advice to you is to just pick one and get started. Because honestly, you're not gonna have any context or reference point for what us audio nerds talk about. Words like tonality and soundstage and imaging and transients and decay, these are all things that you sort of have to experience some version of it to even understand. The Kiwi Ears Cadenza is not perfect, but I do have a few reasons for why I pick it that I'll pin in the comments below. You're totally free to pick something else, but just don't spend too much time on fretting about what is the best thing to buy and just get starting to start with. And please, whatever you do, don't buy the Shure SE215s. That thing is like a decade out of date. Okay, let's get right into it and we'll talk about how you actually wear one of these things. It's probably one of the more confusing points for someone just getting into the hobby and I still see people at audio shops getting it wrong, so I wanna give everybody a few tricks to make it easier for yourself. The way I like to teach people is that you'll notice these shells are almost like a rounded triangle. I like to take my thumb and put it at the back corner of the triangle and then my other two fingers at the front corners of the triangle. This gives you a very stable and firm grip on the shell and lets you manipulate it better once you put it in your ear. Next is that you'll notice there's this hook on the cable. What I like to do is that I like to take the cable and go over the back of my ear first and let the hook kind of sit on it. Then I sort of pull the IEM forward to give myself enough slack and then point the connector part forward so it's 90 degrees and then push the IEM in with a slight twist to help it squeeze in. Honestly, there's no magic way to do this. Just go with whatever feels right. The most important part is that you get a seal and it feels like your ears are being plugged equally on both sides. If you don't have a seal, play with the different ear tips and then try again. Pro tip though, if you are using foams, compress them a little bit before you push them in and let them expand in your ear. Don't just try to push them in. And pro tip number two, you can easily clean tips with a little bit of soap and warm water. Let them dry completely. And don't wear IEMs right after a shower, you're gonna get an ear infection. Now, before we get into the big topic of sound quality, let's go over some details about cables really quickly. The most common type of cable you run into is called the two pin cable. There are two pins on the connector here. You can tell which is left and right by looking at the markings on the connectors. However, not all cables have those and some use a red and blue indicator system instead. Red for right, blue for left, in general. Something to pay attention to is how exactly these cables are plugged in. If there's a hook like this one on your cable, it's easy because the hook always curves upwards. However, some cables that don't have a hook will typically have a blue indicator dot on the connector. This dot should be pointing downwards when you connect it to your IEM and both dots need to point downwards together. That will ensure that you have the correct polarity. Pro tip, if you're ever confused, look up polarity test on YouTube and watch this video. It'll be very obvious if something sounds wrong. The second most common cable type is the MMCX cable. For this one, it's really easy. As long as you get the left and right correct, you'll be able to just plug it in and it'll work. There's even the added bonus of being able to rotate 360 degrees freely. The reason it's not used quite as often anymore is because it tends to be a little less reliable than the two pin. As for the jack, 90% of the time, you'll have a 3.5 millimeter connector. This is called an unbalanced connector. There are balanced connectors like the 2.5 and 4.4 millimeter connectors, and you'll need specialized equipment to use them. So this isn't something to really worry about for now. Okay, let's talk about sound quality. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret if you haven't heard it before. The primary indicator of sound quality of a headphone or an IEM can be measured. This is what is known as a frequency response graph, and it tells us in broad terms, the tonality of these products. Tonality is the perception of the overall sound balance of a headphone or IEM. Whether or not it sounds bassy or bright, warm or thin, this is what is referred to as the tuning of a headphone or IEM. Preference research has shown that tonality is the greatest predictor if someone will like the sound of a headphone or IEM and that a balanced tonality is most preferred. But 
what you like is something that you will have to find out yourself. Now, you might hear other words like soundstage or resolution. In the hobby, we refer to those as technicalities. But more accurately, these are perceived technicalities. They are subjective interpretations and descriptions of different aspects of sound that can't be easily understood from a frequency response graph. It's these perceived technicalities that many in the audiophile hobby pursue, sometimes more than tonality. If all of this sounds confusing to you, don't worry about it. We have a few videos on this channel talking about these very topics because it's that important. Bottom line though is that if you want to talk about sound quality, you need to talk about tonality. So watch reviews that do so. To round out everything you need to know about IEMs to get started, let's go over some frequently asked questions in rapid fire style. The first is, does the driver count or type matter? No, there are a couple of things you could discuss here, but really ultimately the only thing that matters is its sound, not how you get there. Do fancy cables matter? Most of the time, 99% of the time, no, it just feels nice. Use whatever comes inside the box. Do ear tips matter? Yes, actually, they can matter quite a bit. But to start, use whatever comes inside the box. If you really don't like it, you can go with aftermarket tips later. Do you need a DAC or amp? So technically, your computer's motherboard or phone already has them built in. What you're really asking is whether or not you need a dedicated external one for better sound quality. And the answer is yes, but not for the reasons you might expect. It's less that these products will magically make you have better sound and more that it'll help fix any issues you might run into in terms of noise, output impedance, and power. We have videos on DACs and amps on this channel that will help explain all of this, so I'll link them in the description below. But to make things really easy, I strongly suggest you spend $10 and get this Apple USB-C dongle or the $30 Fio KA11 dongle and use that instead of your computer's onboard audio. Believe it or not, these are great little DAC amp combos and will serve you well until you start getting into the more uh, exotic gear. What about custom in-ears? Okay, so for customs, they will sound different from their universal models. This is because customs have a different shape and that different shape will necessarily affect the treble response, which will of course affect your tuning. To what extent is kind of unknown, it depends on the shape of your custom itself. Now, the other thing of customs is that your ears change shape over time, which means that customs that used to fit nicely might not fit so nicely in the future. That said though, if you do need customs for comfort, especially if you play on stage, go ahead and get them. You can fix tonal problems with EQ, or if you're on stage, your mixing engineer will be able to help you with that. So what is EQ and why does it matter? Remember how I said that tonality is the most important thing when it comes to sound quality. EQ is a way to digitally change the tonality of your headphones or IEMs to be exactly how you like it. If you want more bass, just add it in. Once again, I'll add a video in the description on exactly how you do this. And lastly, are more expensive IEMs actually better? The answer is that price has no correlation with sound quality. IEMs aren't like iPhones where the newest tech and highest specs get you better gear. Diminishing returns can start as early as $30 with the Kiwi Ears Cadenza. The reason why we have such expensive headphones and IEMs is because when people realize how much better music can sound with good gear, they realize there's this musical itch that they kind of have to scratch and they spend a lot of money trying to do so. I'd say it's you know neither good or bad, it's all about your priorities. And with that, that's everything you need to know about IEMs in less than 10 minutes. If you really wanna get deep into this hobby, don't forget to subscribe to our channel or join us over at the forums where we talk about headphones and IEMs and get into more really nerdy stuff. Otherwise, have a great day.